we'll start with the, the simple questions like how you um, uh, are you feeling okay? Like, is there anything that is uh, bothering you at the moment? Um, or oh, that is making things difficult for you? Uh, but you see, like, we had something like this conversation the other day, right? And if a person says, okay, I'm okay, okay, but you clearly see it's not okay, then how do you break this barrier where they kind of open up? And that would be uh, very difficult because some things are very personal, so they don't want to share, especially with a supervisor, they may be more likely to share with a colleague or friend uh, and much less with supervisors. Well, some students could be really open about their problems, about their, their issues. So it's really difficult to, to, to say one thing because it's so individual to every person. And uh, like for me at some point, like if the person doesn't want to open up, like I don't want to, to push it because that creates extra stress on them. So I prefer to step back and kind of let a few days and then check again on them. Usually the first signs are that uh, the person kind of loses focus and becomes a bit scattered. So the first sign that I see is that they they less engage, uh, they, they lose focus on, on what they do. Uh, it's uh, more difficult to, to keep them uh, on track of the of the project so uh, but that doesn't always mean right that it, this is uh, this is a big serious problem but this is kind of some of the first uh, the smoking gun so to say what it is and then that sometimes people overcome this and then come back but uh, then the next signs that I notice is like they they became uh more introverts so then don't speak so much uh, avoid kind of meeting with people uh being more uh kind of isolated so indeed this is when i start being a bit more worried when i really lose uh, even the the conversation uh, I would send links to the services that are available for students and for uh, early career researchers. Um, I've noticed that uh, they, if they're not familiar with these services, usually people don't tend to to go and explore them. I really had a case, uh, and I said, "Oh, look, this is these are the, the services like counseling services." So. Uh, other services that the universities are providing a support and the person uh, wasn't familiar with this wasn't feeling well so tried to uh, book an appointment and wasn't sure like how things work and what to expect from it so actually was a real barrier to to get this person to use the university services it turned out it's better just to to have more people talking to this person. It's more more important to have like uh, to establish good pastoral care at the local area. And this is where centers of excellence probably play a big role because they already have uh, networks established. They have uh, professional staff uh, that uh, can oversee some of these uh, issues and have a little chat and perhaps yeah, helping the, the people with uh, how to use the services that the university provides, that, that's also good. But I would say this can happen in, not, not in the crisis state of the person, but more like when they have probably overcome the, the crisis, but are trying to, to recover still from, from some of the impact that they had. When the early career researchers or when kind of people take this part of, uh, of their career, this step in their career, when they supervise students or uh, other kind of researchers, 
Uh, first thing I, I see is that at that point, uh, people are usually very enthusiastic and very motivated to do so, and they would like to go with a very a speed. Uh, or they're not always able to motivate the, the team or the people they work with to move with this fast speed. So, uh, and if that doesn't happen, this motivation is missing. Uh, what I can see is that the, the, these younger supervisors can move really fast with the, with their development and became somehow frustrated from the fact that uh, the team is not moving at the same speed, and that could cause uh, extra stress. Uh, on the on the um, researchers that uh, the, sup the younger supervisors are working with. Um, so it, the advice uh, for such people from me would be look how the other people are coping with this and try to motivate the team. Do extra motivation in order to justify this, uh, uh, this fast moving speed. Uh, and often there are very good justifications uh, but you really need to explain this to to the researchers and to the students who you're working with. I mean, the, the first thing I would say is that uh, uh, they can talk to, to their colleagues and to their peers. And if they do that, they will see they're not the only one who struggles. And I think often this is a, this is a kind of a perception that uh, I'm the only one who is struggling, everybody else is doing perfectly fine. Uh, what well, is not the case, like all of us have struggled, I have struggled as well during my PhD, uh, and I believe everybody has some sort of struggle uh, during their PhD uh, time or during their research uh, career. So it's good to, to talk to other people and to relate to, to other people's experience. And that will certainly uh, change the perception about uh, how we're coping with the difficulties. <music>